welcome you all today we are going to discuss about classification of crystallizers as i told already in my previous class the crystals are formed with respect to high temperature heating and sudden cooling the crystals are classified with respect to different categories the first one is super saturation by cooling alone the second one is super saturation by adiabatic cooling the next one is super saturation by evaporation whenever the crystals are formed it happens under super saturation so there are three classifications super saturation by cooling alone super saturation by adiabatic cooling super saturation by evaporation in all these cases there are many types of crystallizers are there under that the batch processes there are two types tank crystallizers agitated batch crystallizer and in the continuous processes Swisson Walker and many types and saturation by adiabatic cooling there is a vacuum crystallizer here without external classifying seed bed and with external classifying seed bed super saturation by evaporation cases salting evaporators crystal evaporators at first we will discuss about agitated batch crystallizer you try to see the figure there is a tank with central shaft running through it water is circulated through the cooling coils and the solution is agitated by the propellers on the central shaft now the product is collected at the bottom of the crystallizer it is a batch process and there are certain advantages in the case of agitated batch crystallizer the agitation increases the rate of heat transfer and keeps the temperature of the solution uniform throughout the crystallizer agitation keeps the smaller crystals in suspension and allows them to grow uniformly thus the final crystals can be obtained and there are certain disadvantages too it is a batch process or a discontinuous one since the so since the solubility is least at the cooling surface hence the crystals growth is more rapid on the cooling coils thus the crystals deposited on the cooling coils reduces the heat transfer rate now i will tell you the principle of vacuum crystallizer these vacuum crystallizers are working under the boiling point that means it's not working in the boiling point that is under the boiling point so under vacuum a liquid boils if a warm saturated solution is introduced into a vessel in which a vacuum is maintained and the feed temperature is above the reduced boiling point of the solution then the solution is introduced must flush that means sudden evaporation and be cooled due to adiabatic evaporation taking the lateral heat from the solution cooling will cause super saturation and thus crystallization evaporation will increase the yield of the process vacuum crystallizers are often evaporated continuously but they can be also be operated in the batch wise now i will tell you the construction of this vacuum crystallizer you try to see the figure the crystallizer is a cone bottomed vessel that is indicated as a the feed enters at any suitable point that is mentioned as b of a crystallizer and the vapor leaves at point c to go to the vacuum producing equipment this is the very important component of this vacuum crystallizer vacuum producing equipment under vacuum the feed flushes that is called as rapid evaporation and due to ebullition that means that formation of bubbles in the crystallizer the crystals are kept in suspension under they become large enough to fall into the discharge pipe that is indicated as d here from which they are removed as slurry by a pump that is indicated as e here there is sometimes a tendency for the feed to short circuit to the discharge pipe without being flushed that is the feed enters and directly flows into the discharge pipe for this reason two propellers that is indicated f here are installed in the crystallizer to keep the solution thoroughly stirred to prevent the feed solution from reaching the discharge pipe without flushing the next one is crystal crystallizer now i will tell you the construction and working principle of the crystal crystallizer here the part indicated as a is the vapor head and it is the part indicated as b is the crystallizing chamber 
for the first time solution is fed into the suction end of the pump it is indicated as c here pump sends the feed solution to the heater or cooler that is indicated as d here the feed then is introduced into the vapor head that is indicated as a here the vapor is discharged to the condenser and the vacuum pump the operation is so controlled that the crystals are not formed in the vessel a but the vessel a is prolonged into the tube e that is clearly indicated in the figure and extended almost to the bottom of the vessel b that is indicated as b here at the lower part of the vessel b the crystals are formed and are suspended in the liquid the suspended liquid formed in nozzle e passes to the vessel b and an upward flow maintains the suspension at the bottom of the vessel b at the bottom coarser crystals remains becomes finer at the top these coarser crystals are drawn out from time to time through g it is indicated as g here the finest crystal remaining at the top flows again through connecting to the pump which is sent again into the heater or cooled that is indicated as d here thank you